Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to invite Michael Horn as our guest today. He is the official media and representation contact for Billy Meyer, who was one of the first people contacted by an extraterrestrial craft and beings. This has been a long-standing recorded case called the Billy Meyer case, or the Billy Meyer UFO contact. And there's massive amounts of information in this case. Originally, Michael Horn, who was the producer of The Silent Revolution of Truth, contacted its rainmaking time after I did a piece on UFOs, generals, pilots, and government officials go on the record by Lisley Kane. And he sent a very provocative email to me to become familiar with the Billy Meyer case. The only scientifically proven UFO case. Now, actually, I had heard of it, but I didn't know much about it. Let's have him create a frame of reference for us so that we understand why this is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Michael Horn to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Uh, good morning, and thank you for that introduction and explanation. And indeed, it's how it unfolded with us. <laughs> There's so many aspects of the work of Billy Meyer and your connection to him and the work that you're doing with and on behalf of his findings and discoveries and prophecies. I'm usually, Michael, a little bit hesitant to put forth prophecy-type material simply because there's so many hitting us right now from so many different sources, both ancient and modern, and I didn't want to contribute to the 2012 scare or any of that projection, and so I've been hesitant, but because this subject is so far-reaching, and you seem to be really responsible in the way you communicate, I thought I'd have you on. So why don't you introduce, what is the Billy Meyer case to us? Lay the frame of reference for us. Okay. Um, Billy Meyer is, uh, as of today, a 73-plus-year-old man who claims that when he was a five-year-old boy growing up in Switzerland and five years old in 1942, that he and his father sighted a silver disc in the sky, uh, they didn't know what it was. His father speculated it might have been a secret weapon of Hitler's, uh, and they let it go at that. Shortly thereafter, young Edward Albert Meyer, he, was, he wasn't called Billy until much later in his life, uh, young Edward Albert Meyer kind of heard a voice in his head, a, an elderly man's voice speaking to him in his German language. And uh, he was a little perplexed by this. He wasn't quite sure what that was about. And then within about a week of that, as I understand it, well, he went outside, young Edward went outside, beautiful rural Switzerland, I mean, the picture postcard everywhere you look, and wandered off into the forest near his home. And there in the clearing in the forest was a, a pear-shaped craft sitting on strut-like legs, in front of which was standing uh, a man who appeared to be quite elderly in what it looked to young Edward to be a deep-sea diver suit without a helmet. And he said that he he was remarkably unafraid because there was something kind, uh, safe, you know, benevolent about this man. Uh, the man spoke to him and invited him on board this craft with him. And that began uh, an 11-year tutelage, if you will, with this man whose name was Svath. And uh, this was young Meyer's first teacher. Now, what we're talking about here are voluntary face-to-face, wide-awake contacts, uh, meetings, if you will, that are in no way akin to what are commonly called alien abductions, which for the most part aren't even that anyhow. So this was the beginning of, of Meyer's experiences with human beings, fully human beings, who are far in advance of us and obviously in technologically, and it's uh, quite clear after one reads the material spiritually as well in their consciousness and how they live and behave. And that was, uh, as I say, a contact uh, that would last for 11 years. It would be picked up after this man died. Uh, the contacts were picked up by a woman named Asket, whose people were also a fully human race, but whose people come from an adjoining universe to ours, whereas Svath and his people, the Play Aran people, simply come from... Uh, well, uh, you know, a distant part uh, of our in our own universe, uh, the the people of uh, Asket's world come from, you know, a separate adjoining universe. So we are told. Now, I should simply tell people as well that there is um, 
nothing that you have to believe here about this. This is simply information that's given, and uh, you make of it what you will once once you look into it and all that. Now, after 11 years of study with Asket, in 1975, Meyer had the first of what are called his official contacts. And that means that the contacts, which were started with a woman named Semyaze, uh, and then as well with her father, Pata, and another man, Quetzal, and uh, many other uh, people, mainly these the play Aran people, but some who also came from other uh, human races and who look... Uh, I, I should interject here that the people that Meyer has been meeting with for more than 68 years have represented a number of... Uh, Earth races in terms of how they would appear to us, such as Asian, Black, uh, Middle European, uh, you know, more like Scandinavian, etc. We're told that there is such a wide variety of races and skin colors that it's uh, we have no concept whatsoever. You know, so we'll leave that for the moment to say that the official contacts then with Semyaze were called that because it was uh, with these contacts beginning, I think, about January. 28th, 1975, something like that, that Meyer was to transcribe each of the contacts conversations with, uh, you know, between him and Semyaze and or uh, any of the other uh, people who would participate. Were these people in physical form? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, physical beings, you know, three-dimensional bodies, the whole deal. Okay, so this wasn't a telepathic thing, like you see them in front of you and you're talking with them. Yes, but uh, his contacts with uh, certainly the official contacts, and I, I think most of the other ones, uh, since they don't usually call up on the telephone, he was taught how to receive the telepathic uh, message from them. And quite literally, uh, starting when he was five, he was taught to recognize over three million different symbols that are transmitted via thought or telepathy that convey a word or a concept. And these... Uh, this is just a whole other level of um, ability that he has, and this is one of the ways they communicate with him. And what I should say is that, which it kind of leads to the next part of it. My question to you in terms of the first photos taken, I know he was first contacted in 1942, but it wasn't until he was in India in 1964 where he took his first photos of these craft, correct? That, that's true. To fill it in, those were taken of Asket's ships, and uh, when I say ships, there were other people who were in working with Asket in that part of this particular mission, if you will, and so while he photographed her ship alone a couple of times, hovering above this uh, Buddhist ashram at which he was studying at the time, he also photographed uh, a totality of eight of the ships in one photograph uh, in this area when Asket and her other, others arrived for that photo op. And we can also say that there was an article on Meyer in the New Delhi Statesman newspaper in September of 1964, where uh, it was not only reported on him, but he had been interviewed about his experiences with people from outer space. And a young girl who was at the ashram, whose grandfather was the head monk, uh, she witnessed not only you know Meyer and, and the ships, but a woman, you know, Asket, who had come down on a couple of occasions and walked the grounds with Meyer while she spoke with him. Asket also occasionally would simply show up in her room late at night while she was falling asleep, you know, as a young girl. And she said there was just a very soothing quality, like someone comes in to sit with you while you're falling asleep. And that uh, in the mornings, she would wake up always feeling like she'd learned something, knew something more than she went to sleep with. And th this woman... Now, uh, she's in our f film, The Silent Revolution of Truth. She's already a retired U.N. diplomat, having spent a dozen years the U.N. General Assembly on behalf of Cambodia. And uh, both she and Meyer were evaluated by a um, mm, expert consultant to the U.S. Army Special Forces who reads and teaches the reading of body language, which can be uh, of, you know, life-saving importance to people who are in uh, those high-intensity uh, military situations. Well, anyhow, he evaluated both of them for truthfulness, for honesty, and he basically gave them a thumbs up. 